really shouldn't be to the contractors. Mm -hmm. And there's really no way to make sure that that doesn't happen. Because the contractors can come in and get the permits, and in a lot of cases they do. So, um, so there's just a lot to, there's a lot to it. It's not as simple as, oh, they don't want to, or, or oh, they, they do want to. It's, it's not, 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 a, not a good thing. Well, I think, my thought, I, I think that's not a bad idea. To to um, to break it down for just the cost of of the um, the walls, and we would probably need the building official here to see how if there is a way that we can make sure that the, the savings goes to the homeowners and not just um, mm -hmm. and not just the contractor. But I also think that if the insurance company is paying for it, then they should be charged regular. And, and they shouldn't be getting a break because it's not the homeowner that's getting a break, it's the insurance company. Mm -hmm. And there are people whose insurance companies have paid for their, uh, yeah. their, their walls being yeah. replaced. So, and that's that's the other thing that someone had said to me was, you know, this is no different from from a hurricane situation or, or a fire. Sure. But it is different because in those cases the insurance company does pay and they pay for the permit. Right. In this case, they're not paying for any of it. So. Right. It, um, in, in a lot of the cases, and so far they haven't. I'm still hoping that they end up deciding to. Well, we would, we would hope to. I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm hoping uh, personally that eventually this has got to grow up and get uh, FEMA involvement mm -hmm. because simply there's nobody else big enough to, to handle the situation. If FEMA gets involved, then FEMA can pay it. FEMA will pay, can pay the fees and everything else. Uh, but until such a thing happens, I'm not sure it's going to save a very small amount. Uh, if you're going to spend $200,000 to replace your foundation, and this is $2,000 you would save on which is really nice, but first got to come up with that other $198,000. But the, two, the 200000 probably includes all your landscaping, yeah. and it includes your, yeah, it includes, it, you know, if you have any sidewalks, any decks, taking it down, putting it back. It's not, See, that's not the replacement cost of the walls mm -hmm. itself. Well, you still spend, then, right, right. then what's the replacement cost? Well, obviously, if they're coming to the town for a permit, they have the money for the rest of it. Yeah. Right? It wouldn't be coming for a permit if you didn't have the money to fix it. Yeah. Um, it just seems to me like you're you're saying we, we can just save this very small amount of money out of the total cost that you're going to pay. But it's going to cost you 80000 to uh, replace the foundation, 120000 to do everything. Okay, that's $200,000. you are paying $800. You know, now you're saving even less on the permit fees. So actually saying, okay, we're going to save you those permit fees, I don't see that it's going to make the difference for a whole lot of people as to whether they can fix their house or not. And in the long run, this is the, um, how, do, how do we keep these people, make these people whole and not just save them a couple hundred bucks when they move out, of, you know, when they end up moving out because they don't have a house anymore. Well, you know, $800 is $800. And, and if I may, and I agree with you, you know, I spend $2,800 a month for my mortgage, my homeowners, and my property taxes to live in Wellington. When I have to relocate, when I get my home repaired, I'm going to have to find a place to live. Now, with my wife and I and my family, I'm going to have to find a, a, a lease for six months, maybe at fifteen hundred a month on top of the twenty eight hundred a month I'm spending. Right. That just I can't afford both. So that eight hundred dollars doesn't sound like it's a lot to you, but that would be a big help to myself and many other affected victims of of uh, you know going through this problem. Eight hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars, 
every little bit helps in, in this catastrophic issue here in Eastern Connecticut. Not everybody has to move out of their house, though. There are contractors that do it and you live in, you can live in your house. You it, absolutely. Right. As, so there you is, there's a contractor yeah. that, that is doing it that you can live in your, in your house. And there's not many contractors that are doing this. There's right. only three that I'm aware of. But if an insurance company is paying for it, you should pay the fees. All of the fees should be paid. I don't think that that because the homeowner isn't mm -hmm. saving anything there. What insurance companies paid for that so far? Huh? What insurance companies paid for that so far? Paid for. Oh, there's oh, a few. Yeah. In my room. I mean, some going back five years ago, four years ago. Okay. Some have settled. Some? some have settled, but nobody in this room knows for what. Pennies on the dollar, sixty cents on the dollar. Nobody will know that because that's part of the, the settlement. So, um, you know, that being said, they're not settling for dollar for dollar. That that I know for sure. So. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we could say you have to pay if it's if it's coming from insurance company. Fine. I know. It, I then, know. Then I know. Pay. I don't think I, we, I, I don't think I know we can put saying. a disclaimer on it. Just like we can't say, oh, the contractors are paying versus the homeowners. And it, it's either and, you, it has yeah. a cost and a value to it, or it doesn't, or it has a less one than it did, would have. I think that's nothing we can do. So if somebody comes in and it's two hundred dollars to two hundred thousand dollars to fix everything, normally would the permit be? For the cost would be for the whole two hundred thousand, or would it just be for the actual work that's being done on your on your home? What would it be? Is it the total cost of the project, or is yeah, that it's just usually just the total cost just... of the project? Right. So it's the total. So it'd be on the the whole two hundred thousand dollars if that's how much it costs to fix. Mm -hmm. And not the landscaping. I don't know. No, if well, that would include the landscaping. The yeah, landscaping absolutely. Soup to nuts. So, 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 if it costs a hundred thousand, I'll bet you hundred thousand was for actual for the basement walls. That's what you're suggesting is that it would just be on mm -hmm. on the cost of the walls and not right. all of the other. Right. So yeah. you kind of split it. Yeah. And of course, to be there's one dead horse here too. The contractor is going to pulling the permits. The contractor is going to bill you. If your contractor says, okay, I can bill this and I can pull the permits for free, I don't have to cook. I, I can even tell you, you know, I can kick my price up by $8,000 and then tell you, oh, I'm cutting at $8,000 because I don't have to take the permits. Uh, well, maybe the stipulation should be the homeowner has to apply for the permit. I like that idea. Yeah. Maybe the I like that idea a lot. And then that way the, 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 the contractor has nothing to do with it. This is the price, the homeowner comes and pays for the permit. And then we know we're, the, the homeowner's benefit being benefited, not the contractor. I like that idea a lot. Or at least they're aware that the potential to be fleeced is there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because. Yeah, I like that. I can look into that and see if that's... If that is, really should have a gym come in and yeah. talk with us, though, because definitely. I, I definitely... So, would this yeah. be put on the agenda for the next meeting, the select meeting? Yep, okay. yep. And um, we also had talked about trying to create some kind of a task force oh, so that we could just be looking at this this one issue for, from all the different perspectives. And um, we haven't... Then, then August happened. And then I just have to, and so, so I will, I will, um, I, I need to ask, and I did ask a couple people, but I will, I will just ask and see if, if, if they, if they would be interested, and then we'll talk about it next time. Mm -hmm. And that meeting will be open to the public? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, definitely. And then I will put that on my coalition website. Um, You're going to need a bigger room. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I hope so. It's a, well, it's yeah. just a task force to, to answer questions for for the boards, and it's yeah. not it's not it's not you, you can come in. and It's not for the general to the general public or or okay. residents to come in and ask questions and have them research stuff for you. It's for us is what we were looking yeah. at. It's oh, okay. For, it's for okay. questions questions we have like okay. like you know. 
what's the best way to replace replace the, the foundations? Is it is it jack your house up? Is it you know what what do you find is the best way? It's kind of questions like that. It's sure. Not, it's not, not, similar to South Windsor. I guess. Yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. And and um. They're they're definitely trying you know figuring stuff out. They are. And, um, they're they're definitely heading in the right direction. Um, the ATV dirt bike ordinance. I, I have know. one more thing oh, yeah. on the foundation. <coughs> yeah. I talked to Robin a couple times last. Was it uh, spring? Late yeah. winter? Block rants, February. Yep. Oh yeah. No, it was April. April. So that's when it yep, yep. 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 Are we going to consider doing that again? Applications this year. It's, yeah. It's, it opens up. I think in February or something. So we got to. Into it, yeah, one thing I don't know is if this can be, if, if the block grant can be used for this purpose. Um, and, I, and we do know it's only $30,000 per home, so. Again, it's $30,000. Right, but it, But there's a time frame, too, so if, if, can I, yeah, yeah. if we apply for the money and we get it, yeah. and say you, for example, are allowed $30,000, mm -hmm. and that's like on the high end. Because it's usually, well, yeah, say it's thirty thousand dollars. Okay. You have to come up with the rest of the whatever it is. Cool. Within three months <coughs> to get it closed out because the grant only is is available to the townspeople for right. a certain amount of time. But so, if there's no grant available, I can't do anything. No, I understand that, but yeah. so you you in particular, yes, it may benefit you if you can come up with the whatever hundred thousand dollars that you need to. Mm -hmm. But sell your house. Who else can? <laughs> you know, and then when you go to sell the house, I know that money needs to be paid back. Oh, that's a lien. It's a yeah. lien. Oh, it is. It's like okay. that, but then they just yeah. interest-free loan, and it is income sensitive. Yes, too. it you is. You have to have you know be be below a certain income. Yes. Okay. So there are a lot of categories that you have to fall into. So. Um, but yeah. And well, I know I've talked to some of the other town managers and first selectmen the other about trying to do, trying to use those block grants in a, in a bigger way yep. to, to to make it more efficient than each town getting their own. And, um, and we talked about that with Steve grants as well, like not necessarily using the money for, to rebuild foundations, but to to do the economic impact study that I think is necessary of the whole region. To, to without could be used to make the case to FEMA and to insurance companies and to banks that they need to be part of the solution because the the picture needs to be painted for them and we can talk to more blue in the face but you need the data and the state is saying to the town the state won't do it they we asked them can you please do that and they said no so now we need they, they said you guys can do that better than we can and we were saying, well, we really can't because none of us has extra staff right. with the expertise or the time or the, the, um, the ability to do something like that for 20 different towns as a group. It, it's not possible. So it's the kind of thing where you, you would need to hire a consultant. And it probably would cost $50,000, I would guess, to do something like that. And so how are we all going to pay for that? Is that and, could and Krog gonna, do that? Christine? Krog could do that. Or should if all the it. towns can um, can come to an agreement and can figure out how we would all pay into that, do we all chip in per per capita or something? Is it included in the dues? No. Okay. I don't think it would be because this is a, above and beyond. This is a a whole thing. It affects a lot of us in the region. Not everybody, but a lot of the towns. But everybody's a victim. Every, our property value is already down. We every, know exactly what you're talking about. Every, and, we don't and, have a bad foundation, but our value drops. And, and, and I'm glad you guys are here because I wish more people that didn't have the problem right. would come forward and voice because they I'm are. I'm not here to voice anything against it. I, I, I feel for no, you guys. No, no, no. But I'm, I'm the concerned with that. Absolutely. Short staff and not going to get away from nothing. I'm with you. Yeah, I can certainly with you. I'm on the board of ed and we have to think about how we use taxes. Going to affect our spending. The bill rates are go up. Absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're all the same. Boat. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yeah. So, so it's, it's one of those things that maybe we have to invest in order to get the word out. Yeah. And so we're talking about that, talking about that in different ways. So 
hopefully, um, yeah. everyone. And it seems like at least the leaders of all the other towns are on board with that, uh, with coming up with something like that. The question is, what is something? Well, and who? Who's and gonna, who? who? There's who so many lead, questions. Who leads it? Because that's right. Um, that's right. One town can't lead it. Um, they just can't. There's, there's, it's not possible. And yeah. so. When the one thing we have in common is the state of Connecticut is our government, and they're saying, "Not us. We're not going to lead lead this." Yeah, and they should be. So, I, yeah. So. so, they might give us they might give us the money in a in a grant form to do that. Is what I'm hoping. That's my next hope. So, yes, Bob. You're talking about the uh, regional group that. Rollingham belongs to. Mm -hmm. Seems to me that you could take a page out of Unwillington and the town of Willington just join in at all these other towns. The gun range issue was we spent the money for the betterment of the town. Mm -hmm. And I think this is coming to a point where it's for the betterment of all these towns. Mm -hmm. If they could pool their money and attack this in a similar way. Right. So. Right. And and I think we're we're getting to that tipping point. I think all uh, the last few months, everyone was hoping that it was the state that was going to do that, that mm -hmm. was going to take charge of that. And and th I think we're coming to the realization that they are not. So now we have to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So so we're as a group. As a group. Yeah. yeah. So we're just figuring that out. How do you, you know, who, who does what? Right. Yeah. How Why wouldn't the state be liable if they knew so many years ago and they didn't know it anymore? They didn't do their job. Great question. That's a good question. And that might be the biggest question. Well, and the state of Connecticut allowed the insurance companies to change the language. Yeah. Yeah. So that's coming out. Yeah. And probably an NBC nightly news story, good. which is going to be filmed actually in Wellington next week. So good. Mm -hmm. I have just an idea. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I have to get your name. Tim. Tim. You can there's, call me whenever there's you There's probably want. a lot of families in town, and I think that Wellington <laughs> is a unique a town. Um, we should probably put the word out that if anybody has like empty in the apartments or extra space, take in these families so they don't have an extra thousand dollars. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, a type of excellent, that's yeah. an excellent right. point. Because that's that's another additional worry on top of right. having mm -hmm. this problem. Where are we going to live? Right. And if I had to pay an extra fifteen hundred on top, I, I would lose my home. I would that's lose what my I'm home. saying. That, you know, we are that kind of town. There might be, there could be homes that have been up for sale for a long time that maybe you can work. Come stay them. here for three months. You yeah. Know, that's, yeah. That's actually that was actually an idea that perhaps a town should purchase one of these distressed properties because if we already have some empty homes that people have walked away from because of the Kremlin Foundation. What if the town, and the, they can't, the banks can't sell them. So what if we offered a really, you know, good price and then you let people live there while they're getting their homes built? And I don't know how, I don't even know. There's probably a ton of liability issues with something like that. But then if we tried to, if we fixed it up, I, I don't know. That's what I was thinking. There, there might be a homes that have in-law apartments or yep. something. Mm -hmm. well, there, yeah. Willington doesn't allow in-law apartments. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and an interesting t uh, twist of fate here. We don't allow it. We, they have to be, you can have an in-law apartment, but it has to have the same entrance as the main home. So I was just asking today, could, could, you, could you build like a big garage as an apartment over it as a first step and then live yeah, in that while great. your house gets fixed? Yeah. No. You cannot. Let's change the zoning because that makes sense. Yeah, well, Let's help them that way. Well, the reason why the zoning is that way is that we, we are discouraging college students and from, from moving in and living in all of these. Yeah, but you can houses. look at Mansfield has a, a, a mandate where uh, and it, it goes back to years like four women can't live in an apartment or something like that. So you, know, you can write any kind of zoning you want that will, will protect you from it being, you could say, a family, mm -hmm. you know, that has a mother, father, and children is allowed to do this. The same thing with allowing them to maybe put an RV on their property. Right? I like, you know, I was yeah. just going to say yeah. that. Yeah, the RV is a good idea. Because when we were building our house, that would have saved us having a ranch while we were right. building Change the zoning on that. You can change yeah. the zoning. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a great sense. idea. That's a great idea. That does. Yeah. 
And maybe the town could purchase an RV or, so, or a mobile home. And you could write the zoning. With the savings from that. Ten of them. You could write the zoning that is for that situation if you wanted. That's awesome. I like it. Trying to buy a home so that we could put somebody in there. We have 200 people in the town. You got one person that we're taking care of. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, realistically, it's not like there's going to be a hundred homes we're going to work on at once because right. they can't. There's only three contractors right now who can do the work and it takes months to do each one. So realistically, you know, this is going to be many, many, many years yeah. out and, uh, uh, you know, a few to a handful. There probably be more companies that end up doing it in the area, but it's, it's, but the RV thing is, is a good idea because that's the that's one thing that a lot of people are really concerned about are their pets and their kids and their mm -hmm. bus schedules and, you know, all that stuff that gets disturbed yeah. and, um, you know, what are you going to do with your cat you know, <laughs> for three months? Um, I, I, I have an extra room. And I also have a relative who's got a dad. Uh, you know, as so, uh, you're going to know somebody that should, has a, that relative on the property. Mm -hmm. they get, they're covered. They're, yeah. yeah. And I hope that, you know, maybe people could cover with the friends. Mm -hmm. I like it. Relatives, you know? I like it. No, we can make sure. We can, that's one thing we can do. I like Start that. asking. That's a great idea. Yeah. I think you'd be surprised. I think you'd be surprised. I mean, I think this is an extraordinary town, and I bet you'd find people living that. Yeah. The RV makes sense. Those are cheap. You can get them cheap, and you have the utilities there already. Mm -hmm. That'd be a good thing. Yep. Yeah. Like we, could, we could install a dumping station, a transfer station. We have the rest stuff. <laughs> <laughs> put a, the rest put a, put a meter on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many quarters do you need? I love it. And that covers the permit fee. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's anyway. Right. Okay. Well. So so moving on. Um, the ATV dirt bike. I don't have anything for you. Just a matter of managing. And then the last. The last item agenda, agenda item is the Mansfield Willington Cooperative Agreement discussion, which the next meeting in Mansfield about the possibility of tuitioning Willington students to Mansfield. That is next week, next Wednesday. 14, 14. What, what time is it? 14. 14. The 14. You know, anybody know what time? I think it's 7. The day after the town meeting, when I think, yeah, okay, most of us will probably still be bleeding. I have it in at 6.30, but I put it in at 6.32, but I don't think it's 6.30. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, you should probably contact them directly now that everything's going on. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. Next week's a busy week. Um, so we'll see where we're, where we're at with that. Um, under good and welfare. Jim Bulick, our, the chairman of the Board of Finance, sent us a, a letter about doing our annual report, which, which is great. And I think um, Robin already did the, the annual report for the Board of Selectmen, so that's done. And yeah. I think it's great that they're doing it this time of year. It makes a, a lot more sense. It's still hard. Yeah. It's still hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this, this, there was this news article um, about the rest stop robbery that um, happened. I don't know the date it happened. That was a long time ago. Yeah, it's been in the folder for a few weeks. So, um, But basically, it was on the news about um, a robbery in Wellington. So people thought, didn't know what it was. But it was um, at the truck stop. So, um, the rest stop? Actually, the rest stop. The rest stop. Oh, sorry, the rest stop, yes. So um, one of the men pointed a gun at the victim, and after the victim complied, the second man sprayed him with pepper spray. Um, so anyway, they got caught. So good. Yeah. Uh, and I really talk about Dan Carden retiring. Uh, our volunteer fire department got a grant for one thousand nine hundred ninety-seven dollars and fifty cents from DEEP, um, Division of Forestry, and. Um, 
It allows for a 50% reimbursement of the cost of their project with a maximum grant award of 2,500. So um, I'm not quite sure what it was. One of the things on there, yeah, it was one of the things that they talked about at, at budget time. But You're looking sure. for tanks. Yeah. Is it the tanks? I think so. It doesn't say on here what okay. what they're actually using it for, but that's what I thought it was. But. That's good. Um, so what else we already talked about? Um, this is the um, oh this year's emergency planning and preparedness cut, that cut, initiative is going to be on Saturday, October 29th, and Wednesday, November 2nd, which is probably when Wellington will participate. And we've done this every year where we um, kind of do a tabletop exercise at the fire department. We, we open our EOC, our emergency operations center, and try to get the CERT team involved. And and you basically go on, on a conference call and you hear the state talking about what, what's happening around the state in a, in a drill sort of way. Yeah, but it makes everybody, you know, get reacquainted with the laptops and the logins and the different programs and your binder and the forms and you, you get, so you get reacquainted with it. So in the event of an actual emergency, we'll, we'll know what we're doing. So, so that's good. Um, our Economic Development Commission sent out this business directory. Everyone should have gotten one in the mail. Right. And I just wanted to thank them and uh, say kudos because it's been very well received. And Animal Control's got their new vehicle. We already said that. And uh, we got our, um, our, crime, our crime report. Um, from the state police. So here, here are the calls of service that are the most notable. There were 11 accidents, uh, 16 criminal investigations, one burglary, three larcenies, and 582 non-reportable matters. And <laughs> in addition, there were two DUIs, 247 traffic citations, and 39 written warnings. Most of those happened on the highway. So, is that just a one-one? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But if you think about the stretch of 84 that goes through Wellington, it's pretty big. So anybody that they pull over on either side of the road in within those limits is included in here. So. And we don't need a resident trooper. True. We do not. That's something new. <laughs> um, yeah, resident trooper, we could just do this towing thing. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to cost a lot more. Yeah, like, uh, probably like 150 yeah. 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 They'll work first shift, part time. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, any other good welfare from you guys? No, I think you've got it all. Um, oh, we do have, um, I, I want to congratulate Carol Lois on her retirement. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she, not, she's put in her better retirement. She's, her last day will be October 3rd. She's a nice she has worked here for decades. Yeah. She's a staple. Yeah, so we're going to miss her a lot. And um, at the same time, her, her position has been posted. So um, we'll see. Uh, when are the applications due? Yeah, next week? The 16th, I think? No. Yeah. Yeah, the 16th, because they went on the 2nd. So. Yeah. So we have a job. We have Flea market coming up. Mm -hmm. Mention oh, Saturday uh, town meeting would like. Yep, and then it's the meeting the night after that. And then if you want to go to the Solar Rise meeting in Eastford, it's the night after that. Um, you make the town meeting at six o'clock, so that people can go to that. And you can't. Well, can. Sorry, it's in the paper. It has to be posted two weeks in advance. Oh, it's like a, a whole thing. You can't change it. Tim, did you want to put a plug in for your meeting in Arlington? No, it's not. It's oh, not public okay. yet. All right. Mm -hmm. How about the rally? The rally's public. <laughs> George Colley will be doing the Q&A at the meeting. Oh, yeah. He's flying in from D.C. So that's good. Cool. Off the record. Okay. <laughs> No, we're ready to return. Okay. I, this is an add-on.